Today we're going to be talking about Hurricane Ian, big changes to the protocols for sailings departing from Greece. We've also got lots of onboard updates and a real Housewives TV show being filmed on a princess cruise ship and lots more. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Wednesday, it is September 28th of 2022, and we have so much to talk about. And so just um, sit down, relax, we have a lot to go through. So first of all, I wanna talk to you about Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian, as you all are probably watching as closely as I am, is about making landfall there in Florida right now. Um, I looked at it right before I came and videoed this, and so I just, a couple of things, first of all, our thoughts and prayers are with everyone there in Florida, especially our Let's Go family members. But I just want you to know that we are thinking of you and our hearts are with you. Um, I'm really proud Gordon has a nephew, so he's my nephew too. He is on the response team to help people down there. They live up more in the panhandle of Florida. But um, he posted on Facebook that he is already in motion to help people, and I know that there are so many other people ready to go and offer the help that's needed. So I am really, um, I'm grateful that there are so many brave and uh, people who are willing to help. I also wanted to let you know that there are cancellations and changes on lots of cruises. So yesterday I said this, and today I reiterate it. If you have a cruise leaving from Florida this weekend or anytime soon, definitely check before you fly there. Also, there are a lot of closed airports in Florida right now so make sure that you check your flights before you go to the airport to fly to Florida make sure the airport's even open that your flight is running and like I said double check on your um cruise because like there are some cruise ships that are going to have to stay out to sea longer they have already announced until they can get back into port there is just so much in motion that make sure you um, pay attention to that I know that Norwegian and Carnival and MSC and Disney have announced changes to cruises, either cancellations or big changes. I know the Disney Wish, um, she was supposed to be sailing and they've canceled that one. And Disney is giving you a full refund for that cruise, as well as a 20% future cruise credit that you just need to use um, sooner than later. And you'll get to apply that to another sailing, which is, I think, a really good move because um, no one controls the weather here. <laughs> and so I just wanted to let you know about that. Now, um, and we will be watching that more closely. I really, um, it just, it just makes me worry for everyone. So the next thing though, that is a really big deal is, um, last night late, a Let's Go family member let us know, they posted it in the comments. And then one of you was kind enough to send me the notice that you received that there is indeed an update to what the protocols are. If you're going to be sailing on a cruise departing from Greece, which is pretty much Athens for most, um, cases. And you know what, that testing you guys is gone. And so the notice that they received, from Princess here. Let me read it to you really quick. Alrighty, it says that cruising on the Regal Princess, so these people that told me about it are cruising on the Regal Princess on October 8th out of Athens. And it says, and this is from Princess via email, update Greek health, Greek health protocols for your cruise. We are pleased to share that our COVID-19 protocols for your voyage have been amended. As a result, pre-cruise testing and vaccination requirements for this voyage have changed. Guests ages 5 and above who are fully vaccinated for COVID-19 do not require pre-cruise COVID-19 testing for this voyage. To be considered fully vaccinated, a guest must have received their final dose of an approved vaccine at least 14 days prior to embarkation. So they do not talk about a booster at all. You just need to be vaccinated at least 14 days before you sail. So guests who are ages five and above who have not been vaccinated for COVID-19 are required to take a COVID test within three days of embarkation and um, a self-administered rapid antigen test is accepted. So 
there you go. It's so much simpler. And those of you that need to take one, if you're not vaccinated, you can just do the self-administered ones and be good to go. So I think that's amazing. Now, along with that, um, I want to talk a little bit for just a minute about those enhanced voyage um, cruises, because there's been so many um, questions about it. So if you are receiving, if you are on a cruise that is one of the enhanced protocol voyages, let me tell you what those are, first of all. They are the ceilings that go to Tahiti. Tahiti, sorry, Hawaii, Tahiti, and a South Pacific crossing. It is not just the cruises that go to Tahiti. It is the Hawaii, Tahiti, and South Pacific crossing. That's the name of the cruise. And those are um, through September and October. And then in November, there is one um, to Hawaii, Tahiti, and Samoa that is included. And then once the Sapphire Princess gets down there, um, the cruises that are the Andes in South America and the Antarctica and Cape Horn cruises, those are also the enhanced voyages. So the enhanced voyages here really quick. Those are the ones that um, if you are not vaccinated, um, well, sorry, I shouldn't say that. So those are the ones that if you are um, fully up to date on your vaccine and have had a booster, then you need to do the medically assisted antigen or PCR test within three days. So medically assisted means you need to either go somewhere in person to do it or do it with a um, medical professional on a video call with you. Okay, that's what that is. And to be considered vaccinated, um, like I said, guests 18 and older must have received their initial vaccines and then have a booster um, that they are eligible for. If you're not vaccinated, you need to have an exemption to go on those sailings. So apply for that. And with Princess, it's super easy. You just call them on your phone. You have to call them yourself. Your travel agent can't do it. They want to talk to you. Um, the ones that I have tried to do for people, they want to talk to the passenger. So you just call and they do it while you're on the phone. It's not a hard process at all. So anyway, you also need to do those medically assisted um, antigen or PCR tests within three days of embarkation. So it's not really hard, but um, there you go. We have another Let's Go family member and they are on a sailing that is going the Trans-Pacific and they are testing everyone before they get to Hawaii. So if any of you can add any other information or experience that you have had on Princess or any other cruise line with any additional testing during the voyage recently, let us know about that if you wouldn't mind because that really just helps everyone know what to expect. And so he wasn't sure, and I really appreciate his updates. He wasn't sure if it's because Hawaii was asking for that or um, just what was going on. So um, we'll look forward to hearing more about that. But that is the only cruise that I have heard of lately of having any additional testing during the voyage. Alrighty. So I wanted to bring you up to date on that. And also, um, you know, we had heard from Princess and Holland America um, as soon as Canada made those changes on Monday. They quickly said, we're following suit. Well, Norwegian has also made their big announcement yesterday that they are also following suit. It was in the afternoon after I had already done my video. So it says, and this is effective with them for ceilings begin, beginning September 30th. It says um, they, they are saying that all of the COVID protocols that Canada had in place are no longer applicable. And if you are going to go on a cruise that includes Canada in the ceiling, all guests ages 12 and older must provide one of the following. So you either have to have proof of a vaccination or proof of a negative COVID test done within three days of embarkation. So one or the other. So if you're vaccinated, in other words, and you can show proof of that, you don't need to do a test. And if you're not vaccinated you can just show proof of that test and then guests ages six months to 11 years are welcome aboard no testing no vaccine requirements so i just wanted to make sure that you're all very much aware of that the next thing that i want to talk to you all super fast is i wanted to let you know that also as these things are in motion um, i got a nice comment from someone that had just recently sailed on celebrity and they did indeed have to do that they sailed out of athens and they had to do that um, um, testing within two days, but they also pointed out that there is a PNO Arcadia that ship is doing a 40 night cruise from England to the US and Canada and Caribbean in. 
November. And because of the length of the cruise, a fully supervised COVID test is done with, needs to be done within two days, even if you're vaccinated. So the reason that I'm sharing that is there are so many different cruise lines. So really pay attention to the cruise line that you're sailing on. And if there is one in particular you would like me to look up and tell you about, I would be delighted. So put that in the comments. Now we're going to move on to the funny thing about a um, <laughs> reality TV show being filmed on the Royal Princess this week. It is for the um, Real Housewives of Cheshire, The Cruise is the name of that episode. And so it says by entering this, so a Let's Go family member was so kind to send me a photo of like the sign that they had posted there <laughs> on the cruise ship. And it says by entering this location, you are consenting to being photographed and filmed for the inclusion in the program and you hereby irrevocably and unconditionally grant us all rights and consents in your performance and or appearance so that we may exploit the name in the media throughout the world in perpetuity and so if you don't want to be filmed don't go into that area and so I am really excited to hear how this is all turning out I you know I told you like a week or so ago that someone had let us know that they had just received notice of that filming and so I just wanted to let you know that this is going on to me it is really crazy that they are filming a Real Housewives TV show on a princess ship, but I guess this will probably help, uh, surely help princesses bottom line. That's the only reason that I can think of that they would want to do this. Now, the next big thing that is happening on a princess ship is um, this weekend <laughs> on Saturday, October 5th on the Discovery Princess while she is docked there in Los Angeles, they are having a special, as they are calling it, a corporate event. And so um, our Let's Go family member let me know about this. It says if you're boarding the Discovery Princess Saturday, you're still supposed to arrive at your scheduled time, but you're not going to be sailing until 10 p.m. due to a corporate event. That corporate event is a special special um, Love Boat event. You know, they're redoing the old Love Boat TV show. They're releasing it as more of a reality TV show, and they're calling it The Real Love Boat. And so it says, come aboard. We're expecting you. If you um, are not from the generation that watched the Love Boat TV show, that was part of the song. It says, join us from on the Discovery Princess um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 4 p.m. Pacific, on Saturday, October 1st, as we take you down the blue carpet celebrating um, CBS's new reality TV show. So I think that's going to be really interesting. I'm going to look and see if I can find where to watch that. I'm thinking that it will be on YouTube, but um, I'll keep you updated. And if any of you notice where you can watch that, let me know. Um, I'm really excited about that. The next thing that we've got here that I think it's important to talk about is we have been talking about how Princess has been rearranging some people who had like aft cabins, other very desirable cabins. I am sure that they rearrange a lot of people who have regular cabins as well. When we were on, um, when was the last time we were rearranged? When we were on the um, Caribbean Princess last January, we were rearranged. Um, we were only sailing at like 25% capacity. And so that was interesting that they moved us. But we were just in a forward balcony and they moved us more to a midship balcony. And so it could have just been them being nice to us when we were on the sailing to um, let's see, to the Mexican Riviera. We went last October. They also moved us from, a, um, nope, that one they didn't move us. Um, I guess that was the only time we were moved was in January. But anyway, so we are hearing of some people being moved around from different cabins. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to make sure that you all know about this. First of all, we had a Let's Go family member comment being worried if they were going to be moved from a family suite because they have their young children with them. I don't think Princess would do that. Just a heads up to anybody that might be worried about that because there are actually strict rules about minors having an adult in the cabin with them. That is actually a really big deal when you book any groups of um, very many kids or any children at all, really, you have to really pay attention to that. So I don't think that they're going to rearrange you on this. Another thing is I would really like to know from any of you, do you hear of this happening on other cruise lines as well? If you would let us know what your experience with that has been, I would really appreciate it. One of our Let's Go family members made a very good point. He said, you know, I'm wondering if they're moving people around and then they're reselling those cabins and making more money. And so that, I wouldn't like that very much if that's what's going on, but you just don't know what's going on. Now, um, 
One of you asked if you're just doing your own booking, not booking with a travel agent there on princess.com, where it is that you click, please do not upgrade. And so you know what? Gordon and I went through a whole booking on princess.com and I could not find where you had the option to click no upgrade. So if you're going to book your own cruise, call princess and tell them that book your cruise, then call them with your booking number and tell them to select the do not upgrade. Because um, like in Polar Online, the system that you book those Princess Holland America, Cunard and Seaborn Cruises with, you, um, there is the button that you, I can easily click and I always click it unless somebody wants an upgrade. And so um, make sure that you call them if you don't wanna be considered for an upgrade. A lot of times when you do get upgraded, you can call really quick and say, hey, I don't want that upgrade and they'll put you back in the cabin that you had or one very similar to it. Um, usually they'll put you back in the one you had if you're on top of it and you get it right away. But some of these changes are being made that you don't have the option to go back to the cabin that you had. Um, I've heard several let's go family members comment on that and so frequently let me tell you they are the really nice balcony cabins either aft or on the corner with the beautiful balconies that they very particularly um, booked right when the cruise was released so that they could be sure to have another thing that goes along with that is we have a let's go family member that let us know that they're going to be sailing on celebrity and they had bid on an upgrade and they were in an interior room and they got the option to bid on an upgrade when they were um they got their email about five weeks ago and they're sailing on october 29th and so they bid on um, a concierge class cabin and they bid 300 dollars and it got accepted and so they were able to cruise in that concierge class cabin for a total of $1,675 rather than the $3,750 it would have been. And so if you are not fussy about where your cabin is and you want to give it a whirl, it sounds like it's like it, when it works, it's amazing. But you also have to be happy to have the cabin that you had in case you don't get offered the opportunity to upgrade um, or, if you're up, or if your bid is not accepted. So... Well, that's important to keep in mind. Now, another discussion point that I would really like to hear from you on, we have a Let's Go family and they're sailing, um, Let's Go family member and they're sailing with their mother who is um, older. And she, um, first of all, they were really happy that they could be seated at a table and visit with a lot of other people that they hadn't met yet. I thoroughly enjoy that. A lot of times, um, Gordon and I have done that and met just the nicest people. And uh, now, often, if we've talked to lots of people during the day, we really like to eat dinner with just the two of us so that we can visit. Of course, we're not doing that on our group cruises. We're gonna enjoy eating dinner with all of you every night. But what I want you to know is, first of all, you can request a table, a shared table. When you go to the dining room, if you wanna sit with other people, just say you wanna be at a shared table. Now, it, does that include increase your risk of COVID? Um, you know what? I have no idea anymore because I don't think it's any riskier than going to the grocery store, going to the bank, going anywhere it is that you need to go in your life. I don't think it increases it any more than it would be. Plus, you go sit down in the piazza with people. You sit next to them um, like in the lounge, whatever. So I don't think it's any more than that. But the thing that I'm wondering about um, everyone is they, her, their mother has a very specific diet and and so they could not request um they for as far as her diet goes um she says they would um like like if there was not an appetizer in the past that something she'd like she'd ask for like a plate of fruit likewise um she would ask for her steak with just plain without anything else on it or anything and on this cruise they were not able to do it it was on the sky princess they just disembarked 10 days ago um to the baltic so they were not able to just request a plain steak they, when they asked for it they said you can't can't do that. They ended up having to get um, a hamburger that they could get plain just from the Salty Dog Grill and it wasn't very good. And so, you know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if this really depends on what ship you're on. Because I have um, seen lots of times people just ask for some differences on the menu and get it without any problem. And so let us know if you've had any experience with this lately. I think it's a little crazy if steak is on the menu. I honestly um, don't know why it would be so hard to just ask for it to be plain instead of with anything else with it or on it. So 
um, just wanting to know what you all have experienced with that, just to kind of help everybody be a little bit more well prepared. Now, finally, we have got a couple of updates from the Sapphire Princess. You might recall that the Sapphire Princess set sail for the very first time since the restart last Saturday. And so I cut, we've got two Let's Go family members who have given me updates, and I really appreciate this because it gives us lots of perspective and things to be aware of. So first of all, um, let's see. Um, so when they got to their cabin, the first people here... Um, our Let's Go family member said that they found that their cabin did not have a safe. And so on day three, they finally got their safe. Um, housekeeping kept saying that they were cleaning it. That seems funny. Guest services was no help and just referred us back to housekeeping. We even asked if they could remove a safe from an empty cabin. After finally getting a safe today, they sent them a plate with chocolate-covered strawberries and a plate of chocolates. The food lacks much compared to before the shutdown in selection, especially for the buffet. Vegetarian though limited before is even more difficult to find. Today they had two dishes of the same frozen peas and carrots. <laughs> In the main dining room for lunch they had the the gotspacho soup was so salty that they couldn't eat it and they had to let the maitre d' know. Um, <laughs> I love her. She says, we used to think that the food on Carnival was so-so, but actually right now they prefer Carnival food to princess food. And you know what? You guys are not the first people that I have had say that. So many people are saying that right now Carnival food is better than princess food. I've heard that a lot. Hopefully things will improve during our voyage, she says. Carnival has the burrito and taco joint. Guys, burgers on Carnival is hard to beat. I've heard that a lot. Royal Caribbean of the three that sell from LA had the best food of um, Carnival Princess and Royal Caribbean in the last few months. On the good side, the staff go out of their way to help. Um, she's seeking that the low staffing and increased food causes Food costs could be um, part of some of the problems. She says, I hear from mother that it's taking 20 minutes to get a drink with a medallion and still a long wait when going to the bar. I'm thinking our next Mexico cruise will be on the Royal Caribbean. We have our, they're going to be going on a Princess Hawaii cruise next month and they're going to see how it is on that sailing. So that thing with getting a drink with a medallion class um, app on your phone, when we were on the Regal Princess, it took forever. It was really, really, it took forever whether I was, at, you know, if I ordered it from the stateroom TV, and you know me, it was usually a Diet Coke. Um, it took forever. I mean, like, sometimes an hour. <laughs> if I ordered one first thing in the morning, it would sometimes come in 20 minutes, but otherwise it would be an hour, or very often it would just never come. And so keep your eye on your stateroom charges, like we always say, because I did get some charges, um, drink charges charged to my account because I did not have the package that includes alcoholic beverages. So clearly sometimes they thought they were giving me one and gave it to someone else, but charged it to my account. So keep your eye out and let us know if it's taking that long on these other lines as well. I think that the Medallion Class app is awesome, but I don't think they anticipated how much, you know, that they were going to need to add staff just to be able to do all of these deliveries. And indeed, there was a long line at the bar whenever I went. You just had to be patient and stand there and wait a long time. So the next thing is um, the, the updates from our other Let's Go family members. They say that the Medallion has been working like a dream. The food in the main dining room was very good last night. The buffet was reasonable. Um, you can tell that a lot of the um, crew is new. And then finally, it says that apparently that there are some cabins that were having trouble with their air conditioning, but they have apparently been fixed. The cabin did a little speech last night saying, well, this would be on the first night of the cruise, Saturday, um, and explained how busy all the crew have been getting the ship ready. He asked that we all be a little patient with the crew, to, and, he's, and they said, overall, they're doing really well. The only thing that has happened to them is um, the waiter forgot to bring the bread rolls at dinner, and so she said, I just used my initiative and asked for roles and they brought them. So I honestly think it sounds like things are going really well on the Sapphire Princess. I am really, really, really excited to give Celebrity a try and see what their food is like. I agree that um, the increasing food prices could have something easily to do with what's going on. 
I know that the cruise lines have so much debt that they need to service and try to get rid of. Um, but at the same time, you got to keep um, a certain level, I think. So I'm really excited to see what it's like on Celebrity. So if you are um, if you are new around here and you didn't hear my announcement yesterday, December 11th through the 18th, Gordon and I are going to sail on the Celebrity Reflection to the Eastern Caribbean. I'm really excited about that and we're working on some other travels. So we'll let you know once it's firmed up. If any of you have questions about anything I've talked about today or anything that you would like me to talk about, please do put that in the comments below or send me an email. I'd really like to hear from you all. Of course, if you have not subscribed yet, we would just love to have you in our Let's Go family. So please do subscribe. That really does help us out. It does not obligate you to anything and it does not cost anything. Also, if you appreciate these updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? because that really does help our channel as well. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.